Integrating Stripe into your apps for payment processing can be challenging. How do you create a checkout session? How do you pass metadata in the checkout session? And how do you listen for Stripe checkout events? These are questions you've probably asked yourself when first adding Stripe to your product. But don't worry, Billship has the answers. With Billship, you can integrate Stripe into your apps effortlessly without writing a single line of code. In this video, we'll show you how to create a minimal set of Billship workflows for setting up a checkout session with metadata. You'll be able to generate a checkout session URL. Your customer will click pay. And you'll be able to redirect them to any URL of your choice. And by the end of this video, you'll have your Billship powered Stripe webhook workflow deployed and listening for Stripe events, and you'll be able to easily access and extract the metadata object that you submit. To begin, we'll go to the templates library and we can start typing Stripe. And then you'll want to select the Stripe checkout with metadata template. This will create two workflows in your project. The first one that you're going to need to configure is the create checkout with metadata workflow. And as the name implies, we're going to be using this workflow to create a Stripe checkout session that includes metadata. The core functionality of this workflow is powered by this create payment session node. We're going to be using this node to create a checkout session for a list of line items that we provide. After a successful checkout session, we're going to redirect the user to this URL. Of course, you can change this to any URL you want. And then the main focal point of this video is how we can pass metadata in that checkout session. And for that, we can use this metadata input. But before we can start putting all of this to the test, we need to configure this node. And the first thing we'll need to do here is select or add our Stripe secret key. If you don't already have your Stripe secret key saved in Billship, what we can do is go to stripe.com and then you can go to the dashboard if you're signed in. And then make sure you have test mode enabled. And then in the navigation, all the way at the bottom, you'll want to go to the developers page. And from here, API keys. And you're going to want to copy the secret key. And once you have that copied, you can just head back to Billship and then just add a new secret key here. The next component that we'll need to configure in Stripe is our line items. And in particular, we can see the structure that we need to pass here. It's a list and each entry here has a price ID and a quantity. To get that price ID, we first need to create a product in Stripe. So we'll go back to Stripe and we'll go to the products catalog. And from here, we can create a new product and I'll call this test bill ship. And now we're just going to fill in the required fields here. We'll use a one-off payment method and the amount we'll charge is just $5. And then we can add our product. From here, I can click into the product. And next I want to grab the price ID. So I'll click the three dots here and copy price ID. And now that we have our price ID, we can go back to Billship and we can start testing this workflow. So we'll bring up the test panel. And then we need to start filling in our inputs here. And we'll start with the line items. We can add a new entry here. And this needs to be an object. The first field will be for the price ID. And the second field will be for the quantity. And we'll just set that to one. When we create our checkout session, we want to include metadata information. For that, we need to fill in the metadata input. This will also be an object. 
and you can enter any metadata you want here. For example, maybe you need to send an internal ID for your user ID, as well as the credit pack they purchased. That's all we need to do to include metadata in our checkout session. And now we can put our workflow to the test. So if you follow through with all the steps correctly, at the end of the test, you'll get a checkout session URL. And if we copy this and open it in a new tab, we'll get a Stripe checkout form. But before we can actually fill this form out and complete a checkout session, we need to go back to Billship and deploy our Stripe webhook workflow. This workflow is using the Stripe webhook trigger. We can go to the Connect tab, and here we can configure our trigger. If you're curious what this trigger is doing, then here's the answer. When you click Connect or Ship, by using this trigger, Billship will automatically create a webhook for you in Stripe. The first thing you'll need to set up here is your Stripe secret key. And next you'll need to specify a list of events that you want this webhook to listen for. We only care about the checkout session completed event, but as you can see, there's more options available that you can choose from. And if an event type is not available here, then you can easily add your own by clicking add new at the bottom. And now we can connect our trigger. Great, so our trigger has been connected and now we can deploy our workflow. Perfect. Let's switch back to the build tab. One thing to point out here is that the only Stripe node that we're using in this workflow is this utility node that we can use to extract the event metadata object. And that's literally all there is to this workflow. Like we said in the beginning of the video, this is a minimal demo. Now to test this workflow works, we'll go back to the checkout form and we can start filling this out. For the card information, you'll want to use a test card. You can do a quick Google search for Stripe test cards. I just click the first link and scroll down and then here we can see a test card number that we can use go back to the form and paste it here for the expiration date just make sure you select a future date and you can enter anything for the cbc now we can click pay at this point we've went through and completed a checkout session and we're redirected to Billship's landing page. But what this all means is that if we go back to our Billship webhook workflow, we should expect this workflow to have been called. We can verify that by bringing up the logs, clicking refresh, and here you can see we have one execution of our workflow. But what we're curious to see here is if our event object was extracted. So we can expand the logs and then we can expand the get event metadata node. And here you can see for the output of the node, we have our metadata, the user ID and credit pack ID. So if you remembered in our create checkout with metadata workflow, when we tested it, this is the metadata that we specified. Now that you have access to the metadata, you can use it any which way you want. And that all depends on your payment handling logic. We'll leave that part up to you. So now you know if you ever need to create a Stripe checkout session and include any useful metadata in the event object, Billship is here to help you. Without writing a single line of code, you can quickly spin up a workflow to create a checkout session that includes any metadata of your choice and deploy a Stripe webhook to start listening for any checkout session completed events. And then you can easily access the metadata from your checkout session event. And the rest is entirely up to you.
And that's all for this video. Until the next one, happy bullshitting.